Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a nice sunny day today. This is Paul the Solar Guy coming at you live from another site that we just finished an installation, solar installation for on Cape Cod. I uh, thought I'd take the time to go over a few different techniques and procedures that we do to make sure that our systems last decades into the future. Uh, in this system we installed Panasonic, high quality Panasonic modules connected to Enphase IQ microinverters. So it's all AC power coming down from the roof. A little bit unique installation because uh, we actually had to use two different types of panels. Uh, we had to use black panels for the front roof being that we're in a historic district and it is visible from the road. The back roof, we didn't have to use black panels, so we used white back sheet modules. Uh, a little bit more efficient, they basically don't capture as much heat and are able to convert more solar energy into electricity, which is really what we're looking for. Uh, the back of the roof is not visible from anywhere. As you can see, this is which direction the back roof faces, and it's all conservation land back here, which is awesome for these homeowners uh, it's a gorgeous view um, nice private location but still be able to capture solar energy and uh, not be visible from the road majority of the system so so that's pretty much a, a brief overview of the system so what we're going to do today is we're going to head up on the roof check out the modules the arrays take some photos just double check all of our connections wiring make sure that nothing fell down onto the roof just button everything up like i said we want this system to last decades into the future so quality is really our priority uh, we focus on that to the highest extent so like i said in this video we're going to show you some of our techniques let's get it going so first off right before we even get off the ladder we're going to do a check underneath the array and we want to see daylight, no hanging wires. That's a nice good sign. So again, wire management is something that we take very seriously here at Atlas. So you can see here are a couple wire management clips. Those secure the wires to the edge of the module frame. And as we look under here, we want to see nice clear no wires hanging touching the roof anything like that nice hidden clamps so the majority of the clamp sits below the surface of the module the end clamps cut flush with the edge of the module and do not protrude very far past, just enough to have the plastic clip cover the rail. And that clip, believe it or not, fun fact, is to prevent things like bees from making nests inside the rail. So that is required. It's not just for aesthetics, but basically anybody coming back to service the system. It's happened to me many times. You reach underneath the array, and all of a sudden you feel a sharp stinging pain, and you find a little yellow jacket nest. So that's just one of the ways to help reduce that. And that's the array on the back of the roof. Absolutely glorious spot. Nobody around. Central to everything. But that's the modules up on the roof. So here we have our system disconnect as well as a metering enclosure for the local utility the local utility is going to put their own meter in that meter socket and the homeowner is going to get monthly credits uh, in the form of check or direct deposit based on how much solar power the system has made so right now you can kind of see we have jumpers in there just so that the power will flow through the meter socket with no meter in it i also have the equipment opened up if any of you like to uh, geek out like I do and actually look at the insides of the equipment, you can see nice wire bends there. Screws are all torqued properly and marked. Again, quality, our utmost importance. This is uh, what's called an LB or conduit body. Try and get a shot in there. You can kind of see that's sealed up 
so no airflow is going to flow through that conduit uh, condensating or causing any water leakage into the equipment in the basement inside the lb you can kind of see we have two, two probe holes so that if any water were to get inside this metering enclosure and flow down through that conduit it has an escape point to a drain outside the conduit body and not go into the basement especially once after it hits that sealant right there so that's the outside equipment i'm going to take you around here to our conduit run again have another video on that but this is the conduit run that we chose to come down from the roof you think that was an awesome little detail right there sneaking come on sneaking right behind that gutter downspout that ah, camera's having a hard time we need to get a better one but and then again coming down here if we look again inside this lb sealed drained wires organized properly not damaged but that came out sweet and so up there is where we penetrate into the attic space and then our conduit continues through the attic up underneath the array on the back as well as up underneath the array on the front so that way there's no conduit exposed or visible or running all over the roof looking ugly again we take pride in our craftsmanship so that's a little bit of the conduit run there and again just wanted to show you the details about the lb the nice wire bending torque marking and so we properly torque those bolts and then we mark them so we know if they loosen over the years stickered properly labeled we just had our inspection so that's why we don't have our zip ties on just yet but we're gonna zip tie these up so make sure nobody can walk up touch them get hurt and button everything up and get this homeowner making some solar power Also too with these conduit bodies or LBs, in addition to sealing the inside to make sure there's no airflow, we also seal the outside to make sure there's no water intrusion into the wall cavity, cavity getting in around our pipe. So that's what we do there. Just to, again, ensure quality in all aspects of the installation. All right, so here we are in the attic space underneath the arrays and you can see that's where one of our wires comes out into the back of an electrical box. And again, with this system, since it's AC power, we can run interior AC wiring, which we secure to the top ridge plate there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna crawl deep down into this attic to finish showing you the rest of the conduit run something that some place that few homeowners ever really want to or need to see but we're gonna give you the full tour because again quality being our primary concern we have no problem getting in attic spaces or doing whatever we need to to make the most aesthetically pleasing long-lasting system we can Let's see if we can get a good shot there Look at those staples. Oh, nice and cleanly run. These guys do an amazing job. We're almost there.
And we're here. All right, so that's where our conduit enters from the outside. And we run it as conduit the whole way until we get to our first electrical box, which you can see there. That's where we transition. We tie in one of the strings and then we run that in parallel out to our other roof which you can see there's our wiring. Again, inside that LB is sealed, so there's no airflow coming in or out, properly secured, no corners cut, everything 100%. We take pride. So now, I'm gonna shut you off so I can head back. Okay, so now we're down by the electrical equipment area. And if we look up here, that's where our conduit comes down from the roof. Throughout that LB that we looked at. And it comes down and it goes into this box here from end phase. This is a combiner and meter enclosure built in. Those are flashing red just because I just shut it down. So now it's booting back up. So this actually combines the solar power as well as has a built-in metering device inside there. So that keeps track of how much power the system's making. What is going on? Perfect. So that keeps track of how much power the system's making as well as how much power the building is using. Because we also have another set of meters in there. So uh, <clears throat> the customer has an online monitoring system. So it'll actually tell them how much power came from solar and how much power came from the grid, telling them their energy independence or dependence on the grid, whatever it may be. So after the power goes through this box here, it then goes through this meter enclosure. This meter is owned by the customer. It's not required, but we install it just as a redundancy because again, there is a metering device inside the combiner box there but if for some reason that fails or the computer board burns out or um, what have you the customer still has this meter to rely on to track the total solar production of the system again there's a meter outside as well that the utility company is going to install and they're going to give the customer credits based on the number on the outside meter. So this inside meter just kind of basically keeps the power company honest. So that way, if there's ever any discrepancies over any billing or, or anything like that over the years, the homeowner has a reliable metering device that is electrically connected in series with the system as opposed to an electronic monitoring uh, device. And then going over to the electrical panel, this system, as you can see, has a generator, but the generator has its own dedicated protected loads panel. So the generator does not actually feed any power into the main electrical panel. So we can put our solar connection in here. As you can see here, this is the 200 amp main breaker. So our solar connection is going to be right here opposite the main so we're feeding power down through the panel and it's going to make its way through the electrical panel and then any extra power that the system is making more than what the house is using is just going to backflow right out through that breaker and then go out to the utility uh to the utility meter on the other side there um and that's what the utility will give the customer credit for based on how much power the system has made so this is basically just a total system shutdown. This will shut down everything regarding the solar system. The one outside will also shut down everything regarding the solar system. Uh, and then the disconnects inside here are really for maintenance personnel. Uh, they will shut down portions of the system, basically half and half. We have it wired so that there's eight modules and eight modules. As you can see right now, the disconnects or the breakers are off 
except for this one. This is what's powering the monitoring device up there. But these breakers are off because we don't actually have permission to operate yet from the utility and we need to wait for them to install a net meter. What a net meter is, it's uh, a meter that spins forwards when you're using power and backwards when you're putting power out into the grid. So we'll go out and we'll look at that existing revenue meter now. So excuse the noise, we're right by the road here, but this is the customer's existing revenue meter. As you can see, it has stickers indicating that it has a generator on site, as well as the stickers that we've added indicating that it has solar on site as well as where the disconnecting means is for the solar. So this meter will end up getting replaced with a net meter, which is gonna look exactly the same, except it'll have a little red sticker here that says net. And what that will do is it will spin forwards when the power is put being pulled from the grid into the building, and it'll spin backwards when the power is being put into the grid from the building. So right now, this meter only spins one way. It only spins forward, no matter which way the direction of the power flows. So if we were to leave the system on... <clears throat> big truck going by. So if we were to leave the system on, any power going into the grid would spin this meter forwards. So that means the power company will build the customer for whatever power the customer gives the utility. So that's why we have to leave the system off until this meter's changed and the and the utility says hey you can go ahead and turn it on because if we leave it on it will just cost the customer money rather than benefiting them and giving them money off of their electric bill